So uh, I had to switch my number one and my number two because okay. I was thinking to myself, okay, one of them is a little more prevalent in today's day and age. So my number two most influential film genre people in horror history, Frankenstein. Okay. Frankenstein is extremely influential. Um in horror, in science fiction, mm-hmm. heck, in science fact. Yep. You know? I mean, organ transplants? Yep. Frankenstein's monster is basically one giant walking... Transplant. Tr- yeah, yeah. Number of transplants. Yeah. Um, it... I think the great thing that most good Frankenstein movies do is they tap into uh, the human fear of death. Yeah. And, you know, is there an afterlife? Or... And they also... What, what if we can uh, play God? Yeah, you know. Yeah, Um, good point. So many uh, Frankenstein films have been made over the years. Some Mm -hmm. that are as faithful to the book as possible. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Love Kenneth Branagh's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Uh, De Niro was fabulous in that. Um, And there was another one from the early '70s with Michael Cera's, and who played Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. The Mm -hmm. uh, old. Oh yeah, yeah. um, I don't think I've seen that, but I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, the one from the the '60s. and James Mason's in it too. Oh, I love it was James a, Mason. I think it was a made-for-BBC uh, miniseries called Frankenstein: The True Story. Mm-hmm. That was pretty close to the novel as well. Not as close as Kenneth Branagh's. Mm-hmm. Kenneth Branagh seems like it was, it was more complete. The I have actually never read the book. Yeah. I've actually never read Frankenstein. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then you have other yeah. Frankenstein movies that pick and choose what yeah. they want. Like the you know Boris. Car- I was about to say the original, but it's not the original. There were like. Three silent Frankenstein movies really? in the 1910s and 20s. Wow. Uh, Thomas Edison's picture company did a Frankenstein. Oh, wow. I didn't it's only know about that. 20 minutes long. Uh, it was lost uh, for the longest time and then it resurfaced and now we have it again. You can find it on the whole thing on YouTube. Do a YouTube search for uh, Thomas Edison uh, Frankenstein. Do it. It's awful. <laughs> the Just monster prove it's looks awful. like a giant bag of potatoes. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then you had uh, there was another silent movie based on Frankenstein called Life Without Soul. Wow, I've never heard of these things. Yeah, uh, Man, I'm really a classic. Dug, you, really, buff. you really dug up this. I stuff. did. Yeah. Life Without Soul is not um, uh, available anymore. You can't. Nobody knows where it is. It has it's really? gone. Uh, it's like it's like uh, Lon Chaney Senior's. Uh, vampire detective movie uh, London After Midnight. Oh, I've heard of London After Midnight. Yeah. I've actually seen images from that, but yes, I've never seen Yes, that's all movie. there is. Uh, the movie's been lost to time, um, although there are rumors circulating that somebody has a copy in their private collection and is just waiting for the day, and I don't know who it is. Spielberg! Oh. Spielberg! <laughs> uh, I, I have Bless no you. clue who it is. Um... <laughs> But uh, one of these days, I have a feeling it'll London really After really Midnight is going to be remade. miraculously found. Do you think it'll be remade? Or they already remade, remade it, believe it or not, back in uh, like 1940 or 41 with uh-huh. Bella Lugosi. Oh, okay. Yeah, Maybe that's the one. I'm... Mark of the Vampire. Okay, I've heard of that too. Yeah, he okay. looked just like he looked in Dracula, and then there was a female vampire too that was all in like white. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it was basically. Oh, wait, I have seen images. Mark of the Vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That I believe is. Basically, a remake of London After Midnight. It's not exact remake, but it's it is a remake. The London After Midnight makeup is freaky. It's got the jagged teeth, and he's oh, got the wire on the eyes like that. Oh, that's creepy. Frizzy hair. It's one I of think the, I, oh, I've seen the yeah. I've seen the images of that creepiest yeah. makeup he ever did. But uh, getting away from uh, vampires and all that, mm-hmm. and films lost its time. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. You can't mess with it. It's mm-hmm. you know, uh, like I said, horror, sci-fi. It's mm-hmm. uh, influenced other movies. Uh, body, uh, what is, body parts. Body parts. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Excellent re- film. Reanimator. Oh, Reanimator is a great Flatliners. Film. Flatliners is a great um, film. All of those, you know, they deal with that they kind deal of with the yeah, same bring, kind of subject bring matter. The bringing back from the pet cemetery. Oh yeah, true. You know, um, Gage. Yeah. <laughs> so Frankenstein, very influential film, in my opinion. No, oh, that's great. And like I said, that I when I think Frankenstein, though, I think of Boris, Boris Karloff. Karloff. I mean, you can't go. I mean, the Universal. Yeah. Universal. Boris Karloff, then Lon Chaney Jr. took over in Ghost of Frankenstein, the fourth one. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Bela Lugosi played the monster in Frankenstein vs. Wolfman. Mm-hmm. Then it, uh, for House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, it, uh, with the monster mashups, it was uh, Glenn Strange. Wow. Those were all of the actors who played the universal Frankenstein monster. Wow. 
Um, just to go into some of the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of influences, I want to talk about directors. Yes, um, definitely. Uh, I have to say that uh, my I think the best horror director, I mean, you already named Wes Craven. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go further and say John Carpenter. I yeah. think that, you know, you have someone that's done... Is getting. I think he's getting more appreciation now because um, you have studios like, uh, or uh, there's a company called Scream Factory. Um, they're actually putting out a lot of John Carpenter's films on special edition DVDs, mm-hmm. and he's getting the notoriety that he never got when he was young and starting out in his career. Um, because if you see him now, he's a very bitter kind of, just kind of like withdrawn man. Doesn't really give a shit about anything anymore and he got but, put through the ringer he man. got put through he the ringer because the ringer that is the hollywood system it is i mean you think about the thing which a lot of people say oh it's like one of his best movies ever made when that movie came out it bombed yeah it did he no one liked it they hated it now it's a classic and you couldn't you know you think of john carpenter you think of halloween but i you think of the fog the thing the fog, big the trouble thing. in little china yep. in the mouth of madness prince of darkness you think about all these great films they never got the appreciation that they deserved. I mean, Halloween was sort of like the one that sort of catapulted him to stardom, but after that, it was almost like he, he kept being told, you have to do Halloween movies, and he wanted to do different things. Exactly. It's like with Halloween Three Seasons of the Witch, which was a film that I hated when I first saw it as a kid mm-hmm. because Michael Myers wasn't in exactly. it. Exactly. But he was trying to do something different. He didn't want to keep going back to the well of doing, I'm going to do a Michael Myers movie all the time. He wanted to take the subject, or the, the, the whole holiday... Halloween and do a different theme movie every year. That would have been awesome. Yeah, but that didn't work because no. you do something called Halloween three. Everybody says, "Where's Michael yeah, Myers?" Exactly. And then no, and because I was one of those people, and then no. I finally gave the movie a second chance last year mm-hmm. and said, "It's mm. not a bad film. It's not a it's terrific watchable. film. It's not a terrific no. film." But I understand what they were trying to do now, yes. and I think I have a better appreciation for it. And you know, it's 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 a you know. Like I said, the the influence that he had on the horror genre is is immense. I well, mean, they've already started to remake his movies. Yeah, you know, you know, you did something right the first time when somebody wants to remake it. Yeah, twenty five, thirty years later. It's like with the Halloween movies, and he just told Rob Zombie, "Go for it, go, go do it." Yeah, it's like you know, he's like they he's, remade the Fog. Yeah, and it was horrible. Yeah, I know it was fucking horrible. And it's like I said, it's like, yeah. it was horrible, and I just. Ew. Um, you brought up Romero, which was another one I was going to bring up. Yeah. Um, Hitchcock, we've talked about. Yep. Someone that a lot of people don't talk about, though, is Tom Holland, who I'm a big fan of. Um, Tom Holland wrote the script for Psycho 2. He's also done films like Cloak and Dagger. Mm-hmm. Um, he did Fright Night, which is one of my favorite vampire movies ever made. Wrote and directed that. I mean, terrific film. A uh, lot of fun. You've got Brody McDowell, Chris Sarandon, Stephen Jeffries. Excellent actors, a film that just stands the test of time. I was furious when they remade that film, even uh, though I did like the remake. It'll never hold a candle to the never, original. Never, never, never. Uh, I just, I just love the fact that um, in order to defeat the vampire, the kid turns to the TV horror creature host. horror host. Yeah, and it's like what a great idea. And the fact that his name was Peter Vincent, you know, taking. Uh, Vincent Price and um, Peter I'm, Cushing. Peter Cushing. Yes. So I mean, that was just putting them together, and the fact that well, especially because Peter Cushing uh, in the horror, in the Hammer Dracula, yeah, he films, was always Van was Helsing. always Van Helsing or a descendant. Yeah, Van, and then Van Chris Ridley was always Dracula. Yeah. Um, but the thing about it is that you know, and, and the fact that if you watch the films in Fright Night where Peter Vincent is in the film, they're so campy. Like, he's got the stake backwards and there's yeah. like little things like, it's just, a, it's got such cheek. a, just very tongue in cheek. And Robbie just, McDowell was an excellent, not only was he an excellent actor, he was an ex- excellent comedic actor. Oh, he was very funny. Peter Vincent is just, he's a, he's a, he's the cowardly lion. I mean, he is. He's, he's supposed to be the, and this kid looks up to him and goes up to him and says, I have a real vampire. And what does he do? He runs away. Yes. It's like, he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't no. want to, he's, he's a scared man he it's, even a, it's a brilliant it. film it really is and i think the thing that's so it's got a heart to it like the scene where he goes to peter and says i need you and he said he said he said that's a character in a movie he said that's not even my real name you see that there's a heart behind the film and i think mm-hmm. that's what makes it so endearing to so many people yes and even though i said like i appreciate the remake and i do own it and i do appreciate it and i think it's a great film but I, it, it'll never be what the original was, and I was, I was. That was one remake that I was completely going, "Don't fucking remake it, please yeah. stop." 
Um, speaking of remakes, what, what do you think about um, RoboCop? I will give it a chance because I like the first RoboCop and I didn't like any of the other ones. RoboCop 2 was pretty good. It was okay. Been, the end was awesome. The, yeah, the, the fight between him yeah, and the other, and the yeah, other the RoboCop, RoboCop yeah, but, that was, had the drug addicted. But yeah. RoboCop 3 was terrible. So oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. Well, no just, Peter Weller anymore. Yeah, no, they had Robert John Burke playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we, so he, he looked like him from yeah, here down. But then when they took the mask off, I'm like, that's not like, Peter that's Weller. That's not Peter Weller. But yeah, Tom uh, Tom Holland also did uh, Child's Play. Yeah, uh, which you know, I mean, he a lot of you know Don Mancini created the character, and of course has you know been involved in all of the Child's Play movies after Part One, as well as you know coming up with the concept. But Tom, uh, Tom Holland was the one that came up with the idea of him using voodoo to get the spirit into the doll, and you know the whole thing with. Uh, Chris Sarandon being in it and things like that. I mean, that was all Tom Holland. It yeah. wasn't, you know, you know, it's like so he came up with, you know, what we know today is the Chucky kind of backstory. Yeah. yeah so Brad Dorif. Oh man. Love Brad Dorif. Great, great actor. Um loved him in Dune. Mm -hmm. That was just such an odd character too. Well he's played lots of odd characters. Well that's that's his MO. Yeah, but I mean he's my favorite part of the Rob Zombie Halloweens. I loved him in those. I yeah. loved him as Sheriff Brackett because he took a kind of a really small side character and mm -hmm. made him you actually empathized with him more than Dr. Loomis in those films. Yeah. The uh speaking of directors, horror directors, one uh cla well, sort of classic if you're going to be talking about late late 50s through the 60s, William Castle. William Castle, of course. William House Castle is, is a very yeah, House on Haunted Hill, mm -hmm. Mr. Sardonicus. I haven't seen that. Um 13 Ghosts, 13 Ghosts, the original yeah. one. Uh, he was he was extremely prevalent in mm -hmm. the '60s, especially. I think he even uh, directed the Tingler, if I'm not mistaken. I've heard of that. The one. Tingler, the one where they, yeah, the, yeah, the it's theater. a Vincent Price yeah. movie. And what they did this this in the Tingler, there was this like kind of like. Uh, not a scorpion type thing. It almost looked like the earworm thing from Star Trek II. Con? Yeah. Put the thing in his it ear? almost yeah. looked so, like something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And so you have this thing going around, and what it does is it, you know, it gets you, and then yeah. it's like, zzz, and you're like, ah. Yeah. And so what the movie theaters did to um, uh, enhance the movie experience is they actually rigged the seats yeah. of the chairs in their movie theater with like joy buzzers, and yeah. every time somebody got bit, by the tingler, yeah. uh, zzz, their seat would go off. That's funny. And you had people like throwing up, you had oh, people man. fainting, you had people screaming, running out of the theater. Yeah. That's great. And I think at the very end of the movie, if I or or it might have been it was either at the end of the movie or it was during the trailer, it was like kind of like a slow zoom in on you know, Vincent Price, you know, saying oh, something, something to the effect of, you never know when it's going to get you, and then, <laughs> awesome. I love Vincent Price. Yeah. So William Castle is a great director as well. Um, Was a great director. Of course, uh, Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper. Talk about Toby Hooper. Oh, I mean, yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, Salem's Lot. Uh, you also have uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, not my favorite, but, you know, it was a sequel to his film, his original film, and then, of course, Poltergeist, which a lot of people, you know, Spielberg is said to have directed more of that than than Hooper. Than Hooper, but it's still Hooper's, you know, yeah. still Hooper's film. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, you know, Salem's Lot for me is is still his best film, but uh, it just that's my opinion because I just that was like the first horror film that ever scared the living yeah. shit out of me. Um, I, I I would I would have to say I I think Chainsaw. I like Chainsaw better, mm -hmm. but um I yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna throw this one out there too because I really think that this is, and I hope that. This guy keeps doing horror films. James Wan. Oh yeah, I have to throw nice. him in the mix because you the whole thing do. is like, yeah, he did Saw, but yeah. he kind of he did Saw. He produced the rest of them, but then he went and did Dead Silence, which I think is completely underrated. He did mm -hmm. Death Sentence with Kevin Bacon, then he did Insidious, and then he did The Conjuring. So yes. I'm like going and Insidious too, which I I think The Conjuring is one of the best horror films in the last twenty years. That movie is terrifying and. The more you watch it, I mean, we watched it in the theater and it scared us, okay. scared me and my wife completely. But then we saw it again here at the house and it freaked us out even more. So you I'm know, like, going, he's really becoming like this generation's Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, he's going to have a movie every year and a half, two years coming out. You know, yeah, I'm hoping he horror does, movie. Yeah, I'm hoping he does because he's doing, you know, Fast and Furious Seven right now mm -hmm. is what his new one is, and I'm hoping that. 
he does go back to the genre that kind of made him what he is. Because I, I don't, I mean, I think it's good to broaden your horizons and do other things because you don't want to be, you know, yeah. if you're an artist, you want to always be sort of challenging yourself and doing something different. But I always think it's important not to, for, for, remember your roots, remember yeah. where you came from. Exactly. And I think that, you know, he's, he's a great director. I mean, you watch The Conjuring and that's why when people were critical of Dead Silence, and I think Dead Silence just came out when the torture films like Saw and Hostel and Teristas and those kinds of horror films were big. So Dead Silence didn't really, it was like a ghost story and mm -hmm. people were just like, oh, I don't want to see a ghost story. But if I think if Dead Silence came out today, it would be a bigger hit. Because Probably those are the kind of films that nobody's watch. doing the torture stuff anymore. No, that really. kind of died. That and I died think that's going like to come back mid -2000s. because they're, I've, yeah, I've heard a rumor that they're going to do another Saw film, and so I mean, who knows if that's true? Milk or not. the cow till it bleeds. <laughs> why don't you? We don't need another Saw film. Yeah, you don't it like ran so its course. Did you like? I that? loved the first uh, four. Okay, and uh, that was it. I uh, I like two. Two's my well, I like all of them, but two's my favorite. Uh, believe it or not. One is my favorite. Well, oh well, no, one is great. I one mean, is but... great. I, the the only problem I have with one is uh, there are some continuity issues. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think they, they did a really good they job. Did a great job. But it's, it's not a very gory movie. It's not. It's not it's, except it's for the end. end where, but it's yeah. very quick, and yeah. it's like you know where he chops his his his, his own foot off. Yeah, but. Yeah. It's the build-up to that yeah. that was so well done. And then the ending is what really goes. You're going, holy fuck. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I didn't think he that was, that was there the happen. whole time. Yeah, he was um, the one shocking him. It was, it was Saw 3 where, his, um, uh, where Jigsaw's apprentice was amongst the victims, right? And she That's was the two. one... That's two. And That's she, my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. The scene the where she has to swim through the hypodermic needles. Well, how they shot gave that me the but just willies. That scene where they just throw her in there. It's yeah. just like, and she's just going like this, trying to get through it to find what she needs to find. I'm mean, like, that scene is just that, intense. It's it's really nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I was going to have uh, Frankenstein as my most influential f um, film or genre or mm -hmm. person. Uh, but then I, I, I got to thinking uh, about what's popular in today's day and age, mm -hmm. vampires. My yeah. number one most influential, you know, horror, you know, icon is Dracula. Yep. Uh, how many Dracula films have been made? Not too many with Universal Studios. A ton with horror, uh, Hammer. Yeah, because Christopher Lee, they did lots of those. And exactly. I've only seen, I think, a handful of them. But, yeah. you know, it's like, I mean, I, I think Christopher Lee is just as iconic as Dracula as Bela Lugosi. Well, funny story is, well, not funny. It's just <laughs> kind of ironic, I guess. Um, Bela Lugosi was not Universal's first choice to play uh, Dracula. Oh, who was? Lon Chaney Sr. Oh. But he was battling throat cancer at the time. Oh. And eventually, uh, so I know he was young when he pretty much he was young when he passed away, wasn't he? He's he's pretty young. Uh, you know, he was, yeah, he was probably pushing sixty. Okay, so he yeah. wasn't like yeah. really young, but he wasn't really old either. He's no, cause, well, because Lon Chaney Jr. got his start in uh, uh, the movie uh, Ten Thousand BC, if I'm not mistaken, and then right after that, he got famous. For playing uh, Lenny, Lenny, yes, oh, Lenny, in, Mice in a Mice and Men, great alongside film. Burgess Meredith. Love Burgess Meredith. Uh, that's a great yeah. movie, and his character got made fun of, like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons and stuff. Oh, like, yeah, where, are where are the rabbits, rabbits George? George? Where, where are, are the rabbits? rabbits? <laughs> um, I want to pet them. Hey, <laughs> just beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, okay, yeah, again. I told yeah, you. It's, it's, it's the yeah. Freddy sign. All right. <laughs> so um, you're looking at the sound off. It'd probably freak you out every time it went Probably. Out. Yeah. So uh, where was I going with this? So yeah, uh, uh, Lon Chaney Lon Sr. Chaney. was the original choice to play uh, Dracula. Dracula. And uh, so, and then uh, they chose Bela Lugosi because uh -huh. he was already familiar with the role, having played it on stage in Europe and the United oh, wow. States. Yeah. Because the movie is actually an adaptation of the stage play. Nice. Um, yeah. And, uh, I didn't know that. Also, what Universal Studios used to do back then is on, on the same set, mm -hmm. with the same camera and, and angles and storyboards and all that, they would film the Spanish version. To oh, be wow. released in Mexico and in Europe and stuff like that. Wow. So out there, there is the 1931 <laughs> Spanish version with the Spanish actors of Dracula, and it's better.
Really? Than the Lugosi one. Really? Yes. Wow. It's way better. You know, and just if you don't, or just like, is it just... The acting's way better. Oh, wow. The okay. acting is way better. Yeah, because well, it was all theatrical back then, kind of. Just, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. And it is based off of the stage. Play. Yeah, so it's, of you course, know, Bell Lugosi be was also struggling with his English. Yeah. Uh, he learned English phonetically. Oh, okay. Um, and then, you know, some of your some of your characters were a little campy, a little melodramatic. Mm-hmm. You know, the Spanish actors, man, they just brought it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. yeah, and the uh, the guy, the Spanish actor who played um, uh, Dracula was uh, sexier looking too. Uh, okay, yeah. So. You don't think Bella was? Oh, he was a decent <laughs> looking man. You know, I, I I wouldn't kick him out a bit. What? what? All right. Oh no. Okay, I'm I'm straight. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Dracula, extremely influential. I uh, it it. You know, spearheaded. Nobody was thinking about making vampire movies. Mm-hmm. There, it wasn't the first vampire movie. There were mm-hmm. vampire movies in the silent era. Mm-hmm. Um, you had the black, uh, silent uh, version of the vampire by John Polidari, the guy. Okay. You know uh, the story, like in the movie Gothic. Yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. guest of the Shelleys, and then during the thunderstorm. The story is is that Percy Shelley, Mary Shelley, and John Polidari all had a contest to see who could come up with the scariest story. Mm-hmm. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. John Polidari wrote The Vampire. Okay. And there's a silent version of uh, his movie or wow. of his book, The Vampire. That's excellent. Uh, so you had that. You had vampires appearing in other movies as well. Mm-hmm. But you know, Dracula happens. Uh, Son of Dracula happens. Uh, Dracula appears in some of the other Universal matchups. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then Bela Lugosi plays, you know, different vampires in, like, other B-movies and this mm-hmm. and that. And then finally, it, you know, Hammer does it. Yeah. And they have the entire series with, you know, Chris Lee. And uh, the one thing that they really did was they turned the vampire into a sexual creature. Yeah. It wasn't just draining your lifeblood. No. You know. No. It was, it was draining you sexually yeah. as yeah. well. Well, the Hammer women, you know, it's like, they were a lot more... Voluptuous, than, yeah, than the and they got away movie. with a yeah, lot more. they got away. With a couple a lot. other movies wound yeah. up getting an X rating. Wow, yeah, uh, well, it, it doesn't surprise me when I've seen Countess some of Dracula. I think, might oh, have, I think Ingrid I've, Pitt, Ingrid Pitt, yep. yeah, 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 uh, she she got naked, yep, right. Um, Nothing wrong with it, yep, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and so then people continued to make. Vampire movies, you have Salem's Lot, yeah, you've got Fright Night, yeah, um, and then you know, up until this very day, now all the teeny boppers they have their eclipse, yeah, their twilight, but I still okay, calm down, we've we've had this conversation, but um, then you have Thirty Days a Night, which I think is a yes. great film. And Excellent. it's like, and it's a se- it's a shame that that series didn't continue on yeah. because they did do a sequel, but it went straight to DVD. People forgot about it. It yes. wasn't. It didn't have the same actress coming over from the first film. Um, you know, so again, you know, it it had so much potential. It was such an interesting thing where these vampires would go to an Alaskan town that's dark for a month. Yes, and so, they have carte blanche. They can do whatever they want. Yes. I mean, that's such a great concept. And of course, it fell, followed the graphic novel series, and. Uh, they could have done so much with that series, but I think because it came out a year before Twilight came out, when Twilight came out, it was kind of like, no, we're not going yes. with the savage vampires. We're sticking with the sexy vampires. Plus, you had True Blood that was popular as well, where they started that show with having kind of both. You had the savages and the sexy vampires, and then yeah. they kind of forgot about that a little yeah. bit. And I don't know. It's like, I like I like True Blood. Uh, it doesn't have to be think, just savages, but I think it's just like... I don't like when they just go one way and say, okay, these are the types of vampire movies we're going to do and we're not going to do anything else. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. Yeah, it's like, I think you should have mix a mix of different types. And that's why I kind of did like the Fright Night remake because at least it did have a savageness to it. It wasn't just about, oh, I'm a handsome, pretty vampire and, yeah. you know, that sparkles. Then we also had the Blade movies. Yeah, which are fun. and yeah. you know, Yeah, but again, you have the savage vampires, especially with Blade 2. Blade 2. Yeah, which is yeah. great. Um, so yeah, because, you know, so vampires have been popular in movies forever. Mm -hmm. They continue to be popular in today's culture, Mm -hmm. whether it's good vampires, you know, vampire flicks and TV series, like, you know, True Blood and, uh, Being Human. Yeah. Um, I love what they're doing with the whole, you know, like running Boston thing, you know? (laughs) Um, and then, you know, you're not so good ones, like Twilight. We mentioned Not a fan. Not a fan. 
or Vampire Academy. Oh no! What the if hell I see is that, that steaming fucking trailer? And one more time, even my wife doesn't even want to see that one. I'm just gonna Thank blow God. a brick Thank through God. my TV like, screen. Please, That's just please, awful. it looks horrible. Yeah, Interview with a Vampire. A great film. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and Tom Cruise was great in that film. Yes. No one thought he was gonna be good in that film, and he yeah. was great. And he was amazing, and he. He, he holds your attention from scene one. To there, scene. I don't think there's a bad actor in that movie. No, no, but no it's like, but everybody thought like Tom Cruise playing this character. It was a, it was one of those controversial things. It's like when Heath Ledger was going to play the Joker. Yes. Right? It's like ha, broke back Joker. I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember hearing that. And I was like, I said that's messed up. But you know, it's like I remember there were so many people that said that, and it's like. And I was one of those people because yeah. I wasn't a fan of him. And then I saw that, and it's a fortune I saw it, you know, he yeah. passed away. And I'm like, good God. I mean, I still love Jack Nicholson as the Joker, but, so I, think, I. but I think that Heath Ledger just, you know, yeah. killed it in that movie. So but you never knew. And never it's like knew. Tom Cruise is so the stat. Because of the popularity of vampire lore and vampire movies mm -hmm. and all of that, uh, Dracula is number one on my list. And uh, it's. It, it's the granddaddy of all of everything that is vampire lore to this day. I mean, yeah, without that, you wouldn't have what we have now. You wouldn't. Um, to close out my list, I'm going to talk about actors that I respect mm -hmm. in the genre that have, you know, not only established uh, characters that I think no one else can play, um, but they've gone on to do other things within the genre. Um, I think Robert England is the first one I'm going to start off with. I mean, as we saw with the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, as much as I like Jackie Earl Haley. No one can play Freddy Krueger but Robert England, and Nobody. you know he retired that character with Freddy vs. Jason. He said that that was his swan song. He's not going to do it. He was in his sixties. That was a hell of a swan yeah. song. Too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people. You know, they I, love that, movie. I, love, I that love that movie. I love that movie too. so much. That movie was in the works forever. Oh yeah, they started talking about it when I was thirteen, yeah. and it took until I was twenty nine to make it. Yeah, that's a long way. Have you seen the comic books with Freddy and Jason versus they're, Army of Darkness? They're and all in that, that box right over there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's Those are they entertaining. Were, they were going to do the movie, and they just couldn't. Uh, the rights to Ash, they couldn't find a deal because they're doing the Evil Dead. Yeah, remake, well, or reboot. They were going to do something more with canon. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't think that you know they didn't want to mix them together. So the guy that wrote the script said, "Well, I'll make a comic book out of it," and that's what they did. They did the two series, yeah. and it, it was great. And just like nobody else but Robert England can play Freddy Krueger, mm -hmm. nobody else but Bruce Campbell can play Ash. Mm -hmm. And nobody I'm glad else. that in the Evil Dead remake, they didn't have somebody else playing Ash. Thank God. I was glad that they just sort of, you know, said, "Okay, Dude, Ash is one thing. person, and that you know, it's one actor playing him, and that's perfect." And it's stick like, around for the credits. Yeah, which is great. Um, another actor I want to talk about is Anthony Perkins. Uh, yes. I've been a huge fan of Anthony Perkins. Um, it's unfortunate that he doesn't get as much respect as he deserves. I mean, of course, he's done Norman Bates, um, but he was also in some other really great films. He was in The Black Hole. Yep. He was in uh, Murder on the Orient Express. He was in Fear Strikes Out. He's been in a lot of films that weren't always horror, but after he did... Psycho, he was kind of typecast as, as a horror Norman actor. Bates, yeah. And then, you know, he did Psycho 2, which I still think is as great as Psycho. It's my opinion. I But I love Psycho 2 just as much as the original. I think it's because of his performance. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the first film, he's kind of this, you know, shy, quiet guy. You know, he's kind of, you know, you, you find out what he's hiding at the end of the film. But then in the second one, it's him coming back to the world he left and dealing with what he did yeah and the repercussions of that yes. and what he's trying to do just to keep himself sane it really humanizes the yeah, character it really does and it's like and i think it, it should have gotten nominated for something for an oscar because i i mean i feel that strongly about that performance and horror the, gets snubbed it does but i mean he he to to me and that and that was the first introduction to norman bates i had never seen the original psycho mm -hmm. I was 10 years old when I saw that film and, and that performance is what made me a fan of him. And I just, it's sad that he, you know, died so young and yeah. died of AIDS. And yeah. it's, I still think that he's one of the best actors that was around. And, uh, I, I mean, you can't say enough good things about him in my it's opinion. It's very true. I agree completely. Um, another one I want to talk about is, uh, Donald Pleasance. As I mentioned earlier, I think he was the glue that is the Halloween franchise. I mean, I know it's all based upon Michael Myers, but I think without 
It's almost like Captain Ahab going after Moby Dick. If you don't have that, you really don't have you a don't story. You don't have Moby Dick at all. You yeah. just have a whale swimming in the ocean. Yeah, it's like That's you it. need to have... Nobody it. wants to read no, a just, book about just a whale swimming in the ocean. That's boring. No, it's yeah. totally boring. <laughs> I want harpoons. Yeah, I mean, it's like... And, and I think that's what the other Halloween films were lacking, especially before they rebooted them by Rob Zombie. I think you didn't have that force going after evil. And yeah. it's like, without Donald Pleasance, I really just think that the Halloween films suffered because, yeah. you know, they didn't have anybody that they could bring in to fill that gap. Even with Jamie Lee Curtis coming back, and she was great in Halloween H20, but she wasn't Donald Pleasance because she had been away from the franchise for, at that point, 15 years. Yeah. So, you know, he had been with them. He had done three, like, three more movies after she left the series. And plus the relationship between Loomis... And um, Michael, Michael yeah. is completely different yeah. than, you know, with him and his sister. Yeah. It's just a totally different dynamic. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, and the last one I want to talk about is um, Kane Hodder. Um, I love Kane Hodder. Um, he's I've, my favorite, Jason. He He's he's up there with me. I love C.J. Graham from Friday the 13th Part 6, but that's my favorite Jason movie. So yeah. I think that might be why I'm so... You know, I liked Tainted, that. You know. Yeah, but and he was the first guy to play Jason as a zombie, and I thought he did a really good job as playing him as a zombie. But Kane Hodder took Jason into that superstardom. Yes. And the fact that he was the only actor and is the only actor to have played him more than once. He's played him four times, and he was snubbed on Freddy vs. Jason, you know, to carry on that role. Yet he was the only one that kept that character alive during the time that Freddy vs. Jason was being developed, and then to not be able to be in that film... It's just a complete slap in the face and disrespect. Yep. Right that. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I, I can't say enough great things about Kane Hodder. I'm so glad that he has the Victor Crowley character now. That's yes. his own character. I mean, uh, Adam Green developed the character, but it's Kane's character. And he now that he could play that character forever now if they decided to do more Hatchet films. But, you know, it's like he is, you know, he kept Jason alive when... Nobody was interested in making a Friday the Thirteenth film, and I think that you know he's a he's a, a legend in the horror genre. In Hatchet Two, isn't there a scene where he splits a woman in half vertically? Yeah, nuts. Or in Hatchet One, where he takes a woman like this and, and rips oh, her right. jaw yeah. like backwards. Yeah, that's insane. Kane Hodder's the man. Yeah. Oh. Only Kane Hodder can perform like that. He, he's the only one that can actually do something like that and make it look convincing. He's strong. Big dude. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with him. Well, that's what I got. That's my list. Well, this has been absolutely lovely this talking about inf influential horror films and people and directors and all of that. And, and actors and I learned a lot today. And I learned a lot from you, man. Just lovely. going back into the into the I have to go back and check out my horror history. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Especially the silent stuff from Germany. Yeah. Well, know. you know you've seen a number of those. Yeah, like, I just yeah, there's the some things real that you popular were, ones yeah, yeah, you've yeah. seen, yeah. Speaking of horror, uh, go to my YouTube page, do a search for me, Raymond C. Duvall. You'll see a number of my acting demo reels and whatnot. But I also have a link to a music video that I did for our buddy Corbett's band, mm -hmm. Bobby oh. Joe Ebola and, and the, the Children, Children McNuggets. Uh, it's called Time is Crawling. It's off of their conceptual album, F, where every song on the album... Uh, explore some facet of human life. Time is Crawling is kind of a death metal -y song about if if you work just a regular 9 to 5 job, you might as well be in hell. Yep. And my character gets to work and slowly everything at work starts descending and turning into hell. It's an amazing video. I was shocked when I first saw it. The production value is yeah. amazing. It was directed by Jamie DeWolf. Uh -huh. uh, just an overall impresario, mm -hmm. um, uh, he's a slam poet, he's worked on NPR's Snap Judgment, uh -huh. uh, he runs Tourette's Without Regrets, which Tourette's is like, it's awesome, it, it's every, oh, I forget, <laughs> go look at it, it's, it's once a month, I think, in at the Oakland Metro House, where um, it's just, it, it's a giant performance art show, where you have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of different types of performance art, uh, heck, sometimes even uh, wrestling with the with the group Hood Slam, I'm sure, wow. yeah. So, uh, but slam poetry, stand-up comedy, um, jello wrestling sometimes, wow. you never know. With crazy whatever, stuff. Yeah, crazy whatever, stuff, whatever but it's a hell of a time. Go check it out. So, yeah, Jamie DeWolf directed it. Funny, oh, he's um, the great-grandson of L. Ron Hubbard. Wow. And he gets... Uh, I was going to say. He goes all, all around the world 
uh, speaking uh, out about and against um, Scientology. <laughs> and he is funny. like, his, his phones have been tapped. And, oh, wow. Yeah, they, they don't mess around. And they, they oh, no. Can't you're going, that's like an, that's an institution. It's a total you're going to institution. Yeah. Cult. Wow. I'll say it. It's a cult. cult. It is. Sorry, Tom yeah. Cruise. You're in a cult. <laughs> but you were great as Lestat. He was awesome as yes. Lestat. Yeah. So go check that video out. It's, it's awesome it's, video. It's more a horror film than it is a music video. Yeah, really. but it's really well uh, done. Time it's very disturbing. Crawling. Yes. And yeah. go to my Facebook page, Raymond C. Duvall, and like it and watch the you know movies and TV and commercials and stuff that I'm up to. So well, I'm done plugging myself. Oh, you can plug away. Well, thank you very much for being here in thank the Horror you. Zone. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, please share your comments below on what you thought about this. And check out Ray's page and the video and everything. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope everyone has a great evening. Take it easy. Peace.